Thank you for staying with us. Nigeria's infrastructure and asset management face significant challenges, including inadequate maintenance practices. This has resulted in frequent breakdowns, reduced productivity, and economic losses. Revitalizing maintenance culture is crucial for ensuring the longevity and optimal performance of assets, infrastructure, and equipment. The challenges facing maintenance culture in Nigeria are multifaceted. Some of the identified challenges include limited resources and funding, inadequate training and skills of personnel saddled with the responsibility of managing these things, as well as insufficient planning and scheduling, all hinder effective maintenance. Despite these challenges, a robust maintenance culture offers numerous benefits. Revitalizing maintenance culture in Nigeria requires a collaborative effort from the government, private sector, and civil society. By adopting best practices and technology, Nigeria can enhance efficiency, reduce costs, and ensure sustainability. Joining us in the studio is President and Chairman and Council, the Institute for Promotion of Maintenance Culture, Professor Chidi Maduka. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, everyone. Now, some will wonder how maintenance culture, you know, relates to a majority of the things that we have mentioned, talking about infrastructure and the development of a nation, uh, how they connect. So we'd like for you to expatiate on that for us. All right. Thank you very much. Um, generally speaking, when it comes to infrastructure, it's one of the basic um, you know, things that actually upholds a country. And several times when the infrastructural foundation of a country is having problems, it becomes all-embracing. And so this is why maintenance culture is very, very important. Now, maintenance culture is simply these attitudes and values, you know, that um, has to do with trying to upkeep and prevent decay in terms of uh, some of our infrastructure, assets, resources, and what have you. So that's what this institute is all about. And um, we've come on board to actually institutionalize maintenance culture. Now, you will all agree with this fact that several years ago, we've always been talking about maintenance culture, maintenance culture, yes. even up to now. Right. And, um, Nobody has taken the bull by the horn or this why. So that's why this institute has come on board to actually take the bull by the horn and do what has not been done over the years. Thank yeah, you. From, from that aspect of taking the bull by the horns, I'm interested in uh, what the institute has been able to do to institutionalize this culture. How is that changing the landscape, the narrative, and perhaps attitude of persons towards maintenance? All right, let's take it from the start. We are actually coming on board. We're just barely one year old now. Mm. And I'm sure you've never heard of an institute like this before. <laughs> yes, and uh, we are just, like I said, at the infant stage. So we're trying to create the awareness. And I think just the same way it's been started in Nigeria right now, I've not heard of any institute that has to do with maintenance culture in Africa. Mm. So we kind of, Trailblazers to set the pace for Nigeria and for other countries in Africa. And um, suffice it to say that some countries, some of our foreign partners who are getting to know about the Institute, they are becoming very excited. And soon, by the time we properly set the base here in Nigeria, several of them will start calling for us to come and help them because especially infrastructural decay is a major problem, not only in Nigeria, but for the rest of Africans. Mm. So it's, we are just coming on board. Okay. Yes. And I'm wondering how that change is going to happen. Is it going to come in form of you know, awareness? How do you, you know, intend to resuscitate that energy in people to actually maintain you know, infrastructure? Let's take into consideration some historical and systemic factors in place. Great question. Very beautiful question. And I love that. Now let's again take it from the start. Right now, a lot of people are distraught about, you know, especially public facilities, infrastructure, and all that. 
Right. And there is that mindset that, hey, anything that belongs to the public is not mine. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to start from. So advocacy mm -hmm. is there. Um, coming out the way we are doing now to inform the public, and then especially through trainings. Okay. Through trainings. Now, being that this is an institute, it has a double-edged dimension. One, educational aspect and research dimension. So these two will be going together, yes, to get the job done. So we'll be doing a lot of trainings, a lot of advocacy, and a lot of consultancy services to organizations, to institutions, to government MDAs, and what have you, and especially the private sector. Now, the private sector, before now, have been doing something in that resemblance of maintenance structure, but like a solo effort. Mm -hmm. So right now, we want to give that a backing. Like I said, this is coming on board to institutionalize maintenance culture. Uh -huh. A lot of government MDAs are already getting, wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. This is great. And that's what we want. So we want everybody to come on board, and we are championing this. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it will trickled down. Let me tell us one small area of maintenance culture that we must change in the psyche of Nigerians. Mm. And what is that? You see both the rich and the poor, elderly and young people eating things on the road or even in their cars. As you're finishing something, maybe a packaged um, whatever, food, drink or whatever, you see a very fine looking car wind down and fling the thing out of the window. And a lot of us still do it. We could be well-dressed, looking very well and all that. On the road, we do that. That is where maintenance culture starts from. And a lot of times, when I, if I'm behind a vehicle that, that has just happened, I'll be asking, who are you dropping that for? Mm. But do you know the amazing thing? The moment we leave the shores of this country, we dare not do it. Mm. I visited one African country. I'm not going to mention the name. Several years back for a training program. And I was meant to know that the moment you fling anything out of the window, you throw something out on the road, the officials, like, just like we have last man here, yes. the officials will come for you, get you back there, you pick those things, and you still pay the fine. I say, wow, this is beautiful. Means the country has beautiful. a structure to address beautiful, the issues beautiful, beautiful, like this. Beautiful. So if we beautiful. as a country, yes. we do not seem to have that yes. in place. That's why we are here. That's why this institute has come. So invariably, you need a handshake from government to also beautiful. build that kind of structure beautiful. that holds people to account beautiful. for their you're, actions. You're very correct. Interesting. Yes. Now, perhaps we also need to look at consequences okay. for not... Um, institutionalizing the maintenance culture. We have had uh, protests in okay. this country, and we have seen destruction of uh, public property and all of it. Mm. One can say perhaps it is because of the mindset mm. that public property belongs to the government and so we can do anything. Absolutely. And so it doesn't belong to us, and I do not, it will not affect me in exactly. any way. That's the area I want us to, to look at, Good. the implication. Yeah of we not maintaining mm -hmm. or having this maintenance culture. Mm. Over the years, we have seen dilapidated structures. Mm. Uh, when you talk about history, sometimes we cannot relate to them because of the structures that should exactly. replicate or stand as a sign of history. Exactly. We can no longer see them, yes. so to speak. So talk to us from that perspective. Beautiful. Now, let's start again from the, you know, the foundation. You'll see that right now we have you know, preponderance of a lot of, like you said, <laughs> dilapidated, uh, you know, facilities, structures all over Nigeria and all that. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. And we must correct that mindset. We must correct that mindset. Now, and that is why this institute is coming, let me use the word as it were, a neutral body. Okay? Yes. Just as an institute. So we'll be able to do what ought to be done to organizations, institutions, and all that. And even the government and the government MDAs will come on board and all that. So the government are doing their bit, but we are coming now to help them, as it were, do what has not been done mm, over the, the years. Thank you. Bridging the gap. Mm -hmm. So it will be a lot of bridging the gap between the you know, government MDAs, 
various government, uh, what have you, and the private sector, and then cascading it down to the individuals. We must get this thing right. Now, it's not all about, you know, a lot of times we come out and we vet our anger on, like you rightly said, public structures and all that. Mm. In the name of, you will get to the government through that. Mm. It's not, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, honestly. Because 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years down the line, those structures belong to you and I. Mm. They belong to all of us. And look at other countries celebrating some structures as United Nations heritage sites there and all that and all that. And then we are destroying our own. Like I said, and I repeat, 50 years, 10 years down the line, it still belongs to all of us. Mm. You know, uh, we need to quickly go on a break, okay. right? <laughs> well, when we return, we'll come back to this matter of people understanding mm. that, that reorientation towards uh, public property is a crucial aspect that we need to also discuss. So we'll take a break now when we return. We'll continue our conversation here. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Before we went on the break, we were speaking about uh, revitalizing maintenance culture in Nigeria and Nigerians. And we still have in the studio Professor Chidi Maduka, FNIM, in the studio. He is the president and chairman in council of Council, the Institute for Promoting Maintenance Culture in Nigeria. Now, I asked a question before uh, we went on the break, talking about uh, the matter of reorientating Nigerians, their mindset towards public, uh, public property, towards government, how we can bridge this gap that trust has. Because often a time when you look at, yeah, when they speak with you, you realize that it's a matter of, oh, I don't trust government. If I don't do this, like you mentioned earlier, government wouldn't know how angry I am or what uh, my mindset is towards them. How do we address that? All right. That's a good question. Thank you very much. Again, it's orientation and um, advocacy. And... Um, trainings, which is part of what we are here for, okay? And uh, like you said earlier, it's a whole lot, but we, we need to start somewhere. And that's why we're starting it in this format as an institution, as an institute rather, we, we take it gradually, okay? Right now, you, there are jingles that will be coming out from time to time in different media outfits. And then we've been able to also send out letters to, in fact, almost all the various uh, MDAs of government mm. and private sector and all that. So gradually they will start seeing our flyers for programs and all that and all that. We want to take it one step at a time mm. and help people to key into this. The amazing thing and why we are also excited at this is that the moment people hear or see the name Institute for Promotion of Maintenance Culture, it draws people's attention. Wow, maintenance culture. Wow, maintenance culture. Wow. And that's good. That on its own is publicity. Mm -hmm. That on its own is striking something into the minds and the psyche of people. So, and that is how it starts. We'll take it down even to the level of, you know, getting primary school students right. oriented or reoriented. Secondary school to the university level and all that. We are working on some of these drafts with, you know, institutions at various levels where they will begin to call on us to drop the curriculum that will come into the system mm. for education. And that's where it starts from. Mm. The truth of the matter is that Nigerians are very good students. All of us, yes. If you teach us well, we learn well. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, the ugly. So we want to say, let's teach Nigerians the good things. And we are good students. Mm -hmm. We are good students. I can give Nigerians that credit. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning, you know, the school students, because I believe, I mean, that will be quite strategic. But, yes. uh, you know, talking about strategic, do you perhaps conduct research? Are you looking into research, you know, to ensure a sort of measurement of some of the indicators of some of these things you are doing? Yeah. Yes. Like I said, the institute is... Uh, like uh, as a professional institute, one of the key, you know, areas okay. uh, is research. Yes, and it's ongoing. We are, we are doing a whole lot at the same time. Mm. We're doing a whole lot. Research is there. 
advocacy, trainings, and all that. Yes, so we're taking it one step at a time. But on the background, we're also doing a lot of what we're saying at the same time. Mm. Yes. All right. Um, there are those who will be wondering, okay, um, how does one be a part of uh, this kind of institution? And then when we're also talking about maintenance, on the other hand, um, perhaps there are other types of maintenance because all we're looking at is structure, uh, buildings, roads, but you are at the forefront of this. Uh, for better understanding of our viewers, break it down for us. Okay, good. Thank you very much for that question. There are various, you know, strata of maintenance. You have infrastructural maintenance. Mm -hmm. You have maintenance even at the level of the health sector. You have educational, you know, mm -hmm. level. And you have just covering the various strata of the society like that. And it goes on and on. And so aside from the, the infrastructural aspect, there is the mindset dimension of it. So you see, you have the hard core area of it, and then we have the soft skill aspect of it. Okay, so a lot of people, ordinarily, before now, when we talk of maintenance, it's more or less tilting towards engineering dimension. Mm. So as I'm talking right now, a lot of engineers listening to me will say, wow, this is mm. good. This you looks like more of us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that it's far more than that. Mm. That's just an aspect. It's an all-embracing thing. Start from the mindset aspect, right. which is where we're starting from. Yeah. Then it will move the engineering aspect, which has to do with the infrastructure mm. and all that comes in. There is a health sector. There is the educational aspect, okay? the medical aspect. All of them, we're carrying them along. Are, that, are all of these infrastructure related? Or? They are partly. Partly. Yes, okay. they are partly. For instance, the health maintenance. Good. Just give us a sense of what it is. Beautiful. Okay. Like in the health sector, you have to do with the infrastructure, starting with the health infrastructure, those okay. facilities. Mm -hmm. Then even the maintenance of equipment okay. is another aspect. Maintenance of even drugs is another aspect. Mm -hmm. The drugs that are to be used. Because, sorry to say this, at times people can also be careless. Right. Making use of, um, you know, expired drugs and all that. Mm. So it's all... Or not sterilizing it. Or not sterilizing it. So you see, it goes like that. So when we take, for instance, now we want to train maybe people, the, the medical people, in the maintenance, culture-related topics and all that. These are all the areas we'll handle. Mm. And various people belonging to different departments, the medical side, will attend, will take care of them, depending on their area and all that. So, in my mind somewhere, I'm wondering where, how, how or what makes this uh, institute different from the health and safety? There's an institute yes. also that has of to do HSC. with health and HSC. Health safety so, and environment. Yes. It's absolutely different. Right. Yes, different in the sense that they are handling health just from their name, right. health, safety, and environment. But this one is all embracing. All so, simply put, they are just one an aspect, arm. an arm, of what we'll be doing. They also can partner with us. When they come in their own area, we give them trainings that has to do with maintenance, culture, in the health, safety, and environment. environment. Yes. Those who belong to other areas, we give them trainings in those other areas and all that. We get to the oil and gas. They are, in fact, they are one of the core areas that will really be targeting because a lot is happening in oil and gas. Mm. A lot is happening, positively and negatively. All this oil spillage and all that and all that. Some of these things are fallout of lack of proper maintenance mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. So as some of them are listening right now, mm. they will be partnering with us. Of course. That area. Yeah. Are you looking into follow-ups? I mean, a lot of persons go to, you know, schools, institutes and all that, get certifications. Uh, some even, you know, uh, privately funded, individually funded, or funded by even the government. Yes. And they do not actually give back value to the society. So is there a mechanism in place to ensure, you know, checkups, implementation, a follow-up to ensure that mm. these things are actually being utilized? Beautiful. I love that question. Now, that is again why it's an institute. Mm. You also mm. grow along the line. Mm. What do we mean? As an institute, we've been inducting members as you take on some of our curriculum, 
you grow from one stage to another. Let me just use some of our sister institutes. I'm already, I'm a fellow of Nigerian Institute of Management. Mm. Okay. So it's as if I'm being borrowed to this area. My members who are listening right now, they'll be happy seeing me that a fellow of Nigerian Institute of Management is now heading the Institute of uh, Maintenance Culture. Now, under some of these professional institutes, you grow. If you just graduated, mm. you become a graduate member. Mm. After, say, five years thereabout, within that five years or thereabout, it's expected that you have practiced, you have practiced and you have brought to bear what you've learned over the years and you've affected the society positively, which will show you there is no beating around the bush. It will show you go through some examinations and all that. And by the next time, you're also given some time papers to write and all that. Then when you pass, you move to the next level. You become an associate and you go through the hurdles again. After some years, you become a full member okay. and will be following you up. That's the answer to that question. Okay. Following you up. Then before you become a fellow, before you become a fellow, maybe you have some gray hairs the way I'm having because <laughs> it's expected that you are put in between 25 to about 30 years, years. in that professional area like some of us have done. Interesting. So I asked earlier quickly how those who want to be a part of this institute oh, can do so. Oh, beautiful. Just as they are listening with time, they come. Uh, we have an office. Mm. Okay, we have an office based in Lagos. And, um, Where they, in Lagos? Okay. okay, number 60, Ijai Road, Ogba. Okay. Number 60, Ijai Road. And then, so like maybe before we close, we're also having the major inauguration program of the Institute tomorrow. Okay. Oh, tomorrow, okay. yes, at the um, airport hotel by 10 o'clock, and All right. a lot of dignitaries will be coming. Well, we'll, we'll have to leave the conversation here now. All right. uh, we must thank you, Professor Chidi Maduka, FNIM. Thank you very much. President and Chair of Council, the Institute for the Promotion of Maintenance Culture in Nigeria. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Right. Thank